For centuries, it's been debated which came first, the chicken or the egg. But more importantly, how do you fry the perfect egg? What's the key to successfully soft and hard boiling eggs? And how do you make the fluffiest scramble? Today on Cooking School, I'll teach you all that, plus the easy to master technique for making a classic omelet and everything you need to know to prepare an extraordinary frittata. According to the American Egg Board, Americans consume roughly 45 billion eggs per year. That doesn't surprise me because eggs are among the simplest and most versatile ingredients in one's kitchen. Today we're going to start with the basics, soft and hard boiled eggs. Always start with room temperature eggs. So if you have supermarket eggs that have been refrigerated, uh, keep them in your refrigerator. But if you're going to a hard boil or soft boil them, take them out about an hour before you cook them. And I think I'll hard boil four eggs. Now carefully, without cracking the shelves, put your eggs into cold water in a deep saucepan. And don't crowd them, uh, but this could take, oh, probably 10 eggs in here. And you're going to bring this water now to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, turn the flame off. Eggs should never actually be boiled for any length of time or they will turn rubbery and dry. Once it comes to a boil, you are going to cover it, turn off the heat, and put your timer on for 13 minutes. That's for a large egg. I always like to roll the egg a little bit just to make sure that the yolks are suspended evenly in the shell. The green ring that develops in an overcooked hard boiled egg, and you know what that looks like, is the result of a chemical reaction between iron and sulfur around the yolk. And uh, heat speeds up the reaction to form green iron sulfide. So if you're going to just boil your hard boiled eggs, uh, you're going to get greener yolks than you desire. So you see the water is just coming to the boil. Turn it off, cover and set your timer for 13 minutes. Now, soft boiling. Okay, let's, let's do soft boiling. We're gonna do it in the pot. So if you want a soft boiled egg, three minutes. If you want at 212 degrees. If you want a slightly firmer yolk, uh, four minutes. And if you want a really harder yolk, six minutes. I like about a four minute egg. I always have, and I probably always will. So this is just coming to a boil. Let's test the temperature of the water and see where it is. 212, just add a boil and put in your eggs. And again, use a spider like this or a slotted spoon. The eggs have to be submerged, very important. And now cover and turn off the heat for four minutes. Now, depending on how you like to serve your eggs, we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, I love egg cups, and these are called soldiers or cubes of uh, toast. This is brioche toast. Very nice to dip into the soft yolk. Uh, and I love eating my eggs with either a steel spoon or a bone spoon as opposed to a silver spoon, which may taste like it's oxidizing in the sulfurous material of the egg yolk. And the other way that's very nice to serve is in a shallow bowl with white bread toast, again, with a non-reactive teaspoon. Both very nice ways to serve uh, soft-boiled eggs. Okay, that's four minutes. Our soft-boiled eggs should be the way I like them. And now you can just remove the eggs. Uh, just remove them to a cloth on your counter or to a plate. And you can break this right in half. Look how beautifully cooked this egg is. Use a steel spoon to take the egg out of the shell. It looks like the white is the same doneness as the yolk. So you can serve that. Eat it immediately. Of course, don't forget freshly ground black pepper and some coarse salt. And you can dip your toast right into the yolk. You see the consistency? It's creamy, it's not watery. 
Mm, one of my favorite ways to eat an egg. And now, to eat an egg in an egg cup like that, nice presentation. Again, you can cut the top off with a serrated knife like this and sort of just saw it off. Mmm, that looks very nice. And again, serve with a little black pepper, a little coarse salt. What a great breakfast. And again, using your little toast soldier, you can just dip right into the yolk like that. A perfectly cooked four minute egg. 13 minutes, time to turn off the timer and remove the eggs. These are our hard boiled eggs from the hot water. Immerse them immediately in iced water so that they cool off and the cooking process stops. To remove the shells, start at the broad end of the egg, which is generally where the air pocket in the egg is. Older eggs are easier to shell generally than freshly laid eggs because very fresh eggs have a smaller air sac in them. Uh, you know that little white membrane that's in the egg? That shrinks as the um, egg ages. Uh, and so peeling a fresh egg can be difficult, but let's see if one of these will peel. Dry it off, and then start at the broad end, and with the back of a spoon, just crack the shell. Once you find the little air sac, the eggs are easier to peel. See, that's the little sac that we were talking about. And then just gently with the side of your thumb, start peeling the egg. You're loosening the membrane with the shell from the nice shiny cooked egg inside. Now hard boiled eggs in the shell will stay for up to five days in the refrigerator. If you're going to peel them, use them as soon as possible. So we'll cut into the egg and we'll see how the yolk looks. Most important is that the yolk still be creamy. That is a gorgeous hard boiled egg. You see there's a tiny bit of creaminess in the center of the yolk. That will make great egg salad. It would make great deviled eggs. And you can just eat it like this with a little bit of pepper and salt. Chop it up and make your favorite egg salad recipe. Mmm. The perfect hard boiled egg. I find that the secret to light and fluffy scrambled eggs is to cook them over at low heat and keep them moving in the skillet. And use enough butter to make them not stick. And this will ensure that the eggs do not take on any color and that they remain golden. Whisk three eggs in a bowl like this with a fork. Uh, people add water, they add milk, they add cream to their scrambled eggs. But if you're cooking in a pan the way I'm going to be doing, I find it just, if you have really good eggs, you don't need anything in the eggs at all. So basically a tablespoon of butter in a nonstick skillet. And get the butter so that when you drop a little bit of moisture in it, it'll splatter. Don't use too large a skillet or frying pan to cook your eggs. A little water like that, ah, see it's splattering like that? That's just as hot as you would need it. So whisk them up, put them right into the pan, and just keep moving them around, cooking them over low heat. You want the eggs to cook and set, but you don't want them to brown or get too hard. So just stir around. Mm, this looks so good. Really perfect. Always put your eggs on a, if you can, a heated plate. And serve with toast or if you English muffin. And that's it. Perfectly good, so delicious. Scrambled eggs. 
Well, whether you like them sunny side up or over easy, I have all the tips you'll need for cooking the perfect fried egg. Heat an eight inch nonstick skillet like this. Add, oh, a little less than a tablespoon of butter for one egg. The pan should be just big enough to hold the eggs that you're going to cook. And when the butter starts to sizzle, crack your egg right into the pan. Again, use organic eggs, as fresh as you can possibly find them. And use butter rather than oil to minimize the sticking. Butter carries uh, anti-sticking emulsifiers in it. Did you know that? And the butter will add that additional flavor that people really like. So put the egg right into the pan. Try very hard not to break the yolk. So pretty. If you want to set the yolk, you can cover this just very briefly to set the yolk so you don't disturb uh, the egg by flipping it over. But if you want it over easy, then use a spatula, or if you're proficient, you can just flip it in the pan. This is done. I like it just like this. Slide it onto a warm plate. Look at that good country bacon. A little bit of freshly ground black pepper and some coarse salt some toast, and you have a really good breakfast. So I have another way I want to show you how to cook an egg which is fancier than this simple fried egg. And what you need is a skillet, again, a non-stick skillet, and butter to coat the bottom of the pan. A little less than a tablespoon in here, and I want to coat the whole bottom. We're using rings in the pan. Three rings will fit nicely in this 10-inch skillet. And these are pastry rings. And what we're going to do is cook the whites first by themselves. So uh, you want to save the yolk in the shell. So just drop the egg white in. You want the whites to set. And when they're completely set, then you're going to put the egg yolk on top. And at this point, it's very important to cover the egg whites. Now it's been two minutes. The egg whites are set. Now just plop the egg yolk on top of the white. Cover it again and let it cook for about two minutes longer. I think they're done. And they do look quite interesting. Just take the ring off and lift the egg out of the pan. That is such an unusually beautiful and colorful fried egg. I'm putting it on a buttered piece of whole wheat toast. Fun, isn't it? Very easy to do. What do you think? You want to try that fried egg? The white is perfectly cooked. The yolk is perfectly cooked. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. This is a fun way to serve an egg. A frittata is a round Italian or Spanish omelet that has its fillings mixed into the eggs before cooking rather than folded inside like a French omelet. And the eggs are cooked slowly over low heat and finished in the oven or under a broiler uh, to set the eggs and lightly brown the top. Let me show you how to make an onion, potato, and goat cheese frittata. Brown the onion first in olive oil. This is one white onion sliced thinly. And render out the moisture from the onion. And the potato, I'm using about a quarter of a pound of fingerling potatoes. In Spain, they actually cook the potatoes first. They boil them or steam them, uh, peeled, and uh, then cut them into big chunks. And those are browned a little bit in olive oil with the big chunks of onion for a country tortilla. Now, it's very important to pre-cook your vegetables, whatever you're putting into your tortilla or frittata to remove the excess moisture. So this is gonna be mostly cooked in this pan. I'm using a 10 inch non-stick skillet, something that will go into the oven. I think that's cooked enough. 
and just remove this to a bowl and cook the potatoes since these are raw potatoes. A little bit of olive oil and I'm gonna put a little bit of butter in for taste. Two tablespoons. These little fingerlings actually cook very quickly. About four minutes it's gonna take. Salt, pepper. And while these are cooking, break a dozen eggs into a pitcher. We're gonna add a little bit of cream to this. I think I have 11. We need one more egg. 12 and a quarter of a cup of heavy cream. Now whisk, but you don't want a lot of air to get into the eggs. You want to break all the yolks. So use a whisk lightly, but you don't want to have big batches of yolk and batches of white either. It's good. This is a very, very simple thing to make. And the nice thing about frittatas is that they are delicious straight out of the oven. They are delicious warm. And they are, I think, really, really good the day later. And remember, there are lots and lots of wonderful combinations that can be incorporated into frittata. You can even add bacon or ham or sausage with the vegetables. Chorizo in Spain. A few herbs would be nice, too. And it's nice to um, just chiffonade them if you want. Basil, flat leaf parsley. The leafy parts are better than the stems for something like this. Oh, these look done. I'm gonna add the onions back to the, to the pan. I think this looks good already. Isn't that pretty? Really nice. And we'll add our herbs. Again, you can choose to use thyme. Some are savory. That really smells good. Now, add a little salt to your eggs and a little bit more pepper. One last whisk. Adjust the heat so that it's on low. Pour your eggs over your vegetables. This is a very casual thing to make. And you can make frittatas for a crowd. Now raise your heat a little bit. Use your rubber scraper to pull the egg from the edge. So what you're trying to do is set the eggs in the pan, but without browning them. And that's going to take, oh, anywhere from two to three minutes. So you see, if you use the rubber scraper to pull the egg from the side, um, the egg is moving in the pan, which is just what we want. And now it's time to put the goat cheese, push it down into the egg. Uh, this looks like it'll make six generous servings, so put six pieces of goat cheese, one per wedge, if you're going to cut this into a wedge. Looks very nice. And some grated Parmesan cheese. I love grating cheese like this and sprinkling. This adds uh, another nice flavor to your frittata. And get this right into a preheated broiler for about one and a half minutes. Now, when making a frittata, avoid overcooking. The top should still be very moist and not quite set when the frittata goes under the broiler. Also, allow the broiler to heat sufficiently before putting the pan in the oven so the intense heat will cause the eggs to puff like a souffle. The frittata smells done. Let's just look. Yes, it is perfect. Golden brown, puffy. Doesn't that look fantastic? This is an incredibly versatile dish, and you can serve it cut up for an appetizer. You can serve it as a main course. Plus, it's not necessary to serve it right away. It's equally delicious, warm or at room temperature. Now, this will loosen from the pan. 
slide it out onto a serving platter like that. Now I'm going to cut it because I want to taste it right now. And it cuts so nicely into wedges. Very nice texture, very nice color. It really makes a difference. A sprinkling of salt and a little bit more pepper. And you have an utterly fantastic frittata. Mm. Very tasty. And now for an omelet lesson. An omelet is a really simple, satisfying meal that you can enjoy any time of day. It's my go-to meal when I get home kind of late. And making an omelet does involve some practice, but once you master the technique, it's a delicious way to enjoy eggs. And I like to use three eggs uh, in my omelet. I use a smallish pan. This is a uh, like a seven inch pan. And I like to vary the fillings depending on what I have. And today, all I have is fine herb, which is a combination of chervil, tarragon, parsley, and chives. So break your eggs. Um, for this size pan, three eggs will be just perfect. And fresh, organically grown eggs, the best for anything that you're, uh, that involves using eggs in your kitchen. And break the eggs up very well to incorporate lots of air. This is how you get a light, fluffy omelet. And for omelets, uh, try to use clarified butter. Clarified butter is unsalted butter that has been melted and separated from any of the whey or milk uh, solids that are found in butter. So the milk solids settle to the bottom, then you have a very clear golden liquid that looks just like that and will not burn um, as easily as regular butter because it has none of those milk solids, so it won't even brown, so uh, higher smoking point. So use approximately a tablespoon of butter. Turn this up until it is hot, but not smoking. And remember, the eggs should be at room temperature. And I like to use my fork. I lift the pan off the heat, and I pull in the edges. You want fluffy, light, reduce the heat a little bit so the eggs will cook. And then you can also use a rubber spatula like this to pull the eggs. See how I'm pulling them to the center and filling up the void with the uncooked egg. And these cook very, very quickly. Cook just until there are no more runny parts. The omelet will continue to cook when off the heat. And see how it's moving in the pan? That's what you want. You want it constantly moving from the bottom of the pan. And uh, sprinkle your fine herb over the egg. Tarragon, chervil, parsley, and just a little bit of chive. And a nice rolled omelet is one side this way and just slide it to that part of the pan. And then onto a warm plate. Hold the pan this way in your hand. Do you see what I'm doing? You roll the egg onto the plate. French style omelets are rolled and American style omelets are folded. And just a few little herb on the omelet like that. Add some Canadian bacon, regular bacon, some sausage, some toast, and you have a really delicious omelet feast. And once you master the techniques for cooking eggs, you'll find them to be delightfully easy. Whether you boil, scramble, or fry, remember the keys to success lie in the temperature and the proper timing. Thanks so much for joining me on this edition of Martha's Cooking School. See you next lesson.